Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the asynchronous counters, which is also known as the ripple counters. So in the previous video of the counter, we have seen that in the asynchronous counters, only one flip flop receives the clock signal, and the output of that flip flop is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop. So in this type of counter, basically the output transition in the flip flop. Acts as a clock signal for the next flip flop. So first of all, we will see that how to design the asynchronous binary counters. So as I said in the previous video, the output of the binary counter changes in the binary sequence. And we have seen that there are two types of binary counters, that is up counter and the down counter. So as its name suggests, this up counter counts from zero to n, that is in the upward direction. While the down counter counts in the downward direction, that is from n to zero. So first of all, let us see the design of the two-bit ripple counter. And first, let us start with the design of the up counter. So here, since it is a two-bit counter, so we will require the two flip-flops. So as you can see, this up counter is designed with the help of the negative triggered flip-flops. So here. The clock signal is applied to the clock input of the first flip flop. So the flip flop which receives the clock signal represents the LSB position of the count, and the flip flop on the right side represents the MSB position of the count. So suppose we have a more than two flip flops, then the flip flop which receives the clock signal at the last that represents the MSB. So here for the up counting, this Q output of the flip flop. Is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop. So here, the next flip flop will receive the clock whenever there is a transition in the output of the first flip flop. So here, to get those transitions in the output of the flip flop, we need to use those flip flops in the toggle mode. That means at the every clock pulse, the output of the flip flop should toggle. Then and then only, the next flip flop will be able to receive the clock signal. So here. The JK flip flops have been selected, and they are used in the toggle mode. So as you know, if you want to use the JK flip flop in the toggle mode, then both inputs J and K should be connected to the logic one. That means at the every clock pulse, now the output of the JK flip flop will toggle. So similar to the JK flip flop, we can also use the T or D flip flop in the toggle mode. So later on, I will show you that how we can design the same counter. With the help of the D flip flop as well as the T flip flop, but here first let us see that how it can be designed with the help of the JK flip flop. So now let us understand the working of this two-bit ripple counter with the help of the timing diagram. So initially, let's assume that with the help of the clear input, all the flip flops have been reset to zero. So here, these periodic clock pulses are applied to the clock input of the first flip flop. So here, since the flip flop is the negative edge triggered flip flops, so they will toggle the state at the every falling edge of the clock signal. That means here, this Q0 output will become one at the first falling edge, and it will remain one until the next falling edge. Now once again, at the next falling edge, its output will toggle and it will become zero, and in this way, the output Q0 will toggle at the every falling edge. So as you can see from the circuit diagram, this Q0 is applied to the clock input of the next flip flop. That means now the output of the second flip flop, or this Q1, will toggle at the every falling edge of this Q0. So as you can see, up to the first falling edge of this Q0, this Q1 will remain zero, and at the first falling edge, it will become one, and it will remain in that state until the next falling edge. And once again, at the next falling gauge, this Q1 will toggle and it will become zero. So in this way, these outputs Q1 and Q0 will change. So here, the output Q1 and Q0 represents the state or the count of the counter. And as you can see over here, this count is changing at the every clock pulse. So as you can see, initially, up to the first falling gauge, both Q1 and Q0 are zero. Then after, at the first falling gauge, this Q0 will become one, 
while the q1 will still remain 0. That means the next count of the counter is equal to 0, 1. Likewise, after the second falling gauge, the state of the counter will become 1, 0. And then after, it will become 1, 1. So once again after that, at the next falling gauge, the output of the counter will become 0, 0. And once again, the same sequence will get repeated. So in this way, we can design this 2-bit up counter. Similarly, with the little modification, we can use the same circuit for the down counting. So for the down counting, instead of the Q output, this Q bar output of the first flip-flop is connected to the clock input of the next flip-flop. So with this little modification, now this circuit will work as the 2-bit down counter. So once again, let us understand the working of this circuit with the help of the timing diagram. So once again we are assuming that initially with the help of the clear signal all the flip-flops have been reset to zero. So once again here the output of the first flip-flop will toggle at the every falling edge of the clock signal. So here in the down counter this Q bar output is connected to the clock input of the next flip-flop. So here this Q0 bar will be exactly opposite to the Q0 output. That means now this Q0 bar output will act as a clock input for the next flip-flop. That means at the every falling edge of this Q0 bar output, the output of the second flip-flop will toggle. So initially, this Q1 is equal to 0. And at the first falling edge, this Q1 will toggle and it will become 1. So it will remain in the same state until the next falling gauge. And once again at the next falling gauge, this Q1 will become 0. So if you see the Q1 and Q0 output at the every falling gauge, then they are changing in the downward direction. So initially, both Q1 and Q0 are 0. Then after, at the next falling gauge, both will become 1. Then after, at the second falling gauge, this Q1 and Q0 will become 1, 0. And after that, if you see, then it will become 0, 1. And once again, after the next falling gauge, the output of this counter will become 0, 0. So in this way, this 2-bit down counter has the four different output states and it counts from 1, 1 to 0, 0. And once the sequence gets completed, then it will go back to 1, 1. So in this way, we can design this 2-bit down counter. So here, both up and down counters were designed with the help of the negative edge triggered flip-flops. So we have seen that in the up counter, the Q output was connected to the clock input, while in the down counter, this Q bar output was connected to the clock input. So just by adding the little combinational circuit, or to be precise, just by adding the two cross one multiplexer between the two flip-flops, we can use the counter as either up counter or the down counter. So this is the circuit of the 2-bit up or down counter. So here, this block between the two flip-flops represents the 2 cross 1 multiplexer. So here, this input is the selection input. So depending on the selection input, either Q0 or Q0 bar will get connected to the clock input of the next flip-flop. And based on that, it can be used as either up counter or the down counter. So whenever the selection input is equal to 1, then the output of the first AND gate will become 1. And therefore, this Q0 will get connected to the clock input. So in that case, this counter will work as the up counter. And whenever this selection input is equal to 0, then the output of the second AND gate will become 1. That means in that case, this Q0 bar will be applied to the clock input. And in that case, this counter will work as the down counter. So in this way, we can design this binary up and down counters. Alright, so so far we have seen that how to design this 2-bit up or down counters with the help of the negative edge trigger JK flip-flops. Similarly, we can also design the same counters with the help of the positive edge trigger flip-flops. So this is the circuit diagram of the 2-bit up counter with the help of the positive edge trigger JK flip-flops. So once again, here both flip-flops are used in the toggle mode. That means here, both J and K inputs are connected to the logic one. And as you can see, 
the clock signal is applied to the clock input of the first flip flop so here to design this up counter using the positive edge triggered flip flops this q0 bar output is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop so just remember that while designing the up counter in case of the positive edge triggered flip flop this q bar output is connected to the clock input while in case of the negative edge triggered flip flop this q output is connected to the clock input so now let us understand the working of this 2 bit triple counter with the help of the timing diagram so here once again let's assume that initially with the help of the clear input all the flip flops have been reset to zero so here the output of the first flip flop will toggle at the every rising edge of the clock signal so here this q0 bar is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop so this q0 bar will be exactly opposite to the q0 that means now this q0 bar will act as a clock input for the next flip flop and at the every rising edge of this q0 bar the output of the second flip flop will toggle so initially this q1 is equal to 0 and at the first rising edge this q1 will toggle and it will become 1 so it will remain in the same state until the next rising edge and once again at the next rising edge this q1 will toggle and it will become 0 so in this way both q1 and q0 outputs will change so if you see the q0 and q1 outputs at the every clock edge then initially both q0 and q1 are zero then at the first falling edge this q1 and q0 will become 0 1 and then after at the next rising edge it will become 1 0 and after that at the next rising edge it will become 1 1 so in this way the output of the counter is changing from 0 0 to 1 1 and then after at the next rising gauge once again the output will become 0 0 and once again the same sequence will get repeated so in this way using the positive edge triggered flip flops also we can design this up counter so if you want to use the same circuit as the down counter then we just need to apply the q input of the first flip flop to the clock input of the next stage so in short for the positive edge triggered flip flops for the up counting this q0 bar is connected to the clock input while for the down counting this q output is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop so this is the circuit diagram of the 2 bit down counter with the help of the positive edge triggered jk flip flops and here is the timing diagram of the same so as you can see at the each rising edge of the clock signal the q0 output will toggle and similarly at the every rising edge of the q0 this output q1 will also toggle and in this way at the every rising edge the count of the counter will change that means this counter will count from 11 to 00 and once again it will come back to 11 so in this way we can design the binary up and the down ripple counters using the positive and the negative edge triggered flip flops So so far these counters have been designed with the help of the JK flip flops where the JK flip flop was used in the toggle mode but similarly it can also be designed using the T flip flop and the D flip flops so to use the T flip flop in the toggle mode the T input should get connected to the logic one because we know that when T is equal to 1 then the T flip flop will operate in the toggle mode and at the every clock edge the output of the t flip flop will change so this is the 2 bit up counter using the positive edge triggered t flip flops and as you can see since it is the up counter so the q bar output of the first flip flop is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop so similarly we can also design the same counter using the d flip flops so to use the d flip flop in the toggle mode the q bar output of the d flip flop should be connected back to the input so for example initially this q is equal to 0 then the q bar will become 1 that means for the next rising gauge the input to the d flip flop is now 1 and therefore at the next rising gauge the output of the flip flop will also become 1 so now since q is 1 so the q bar will become 0 and the same will be applied to the input that means at the next rising gauge now the output of the d flip flop will become 0 
So in this way, by connecting the Q-bar output of the D flip-flop back to the input side, we can use it in the toggle mode. So this is the 2-bit up counter using the positive edge triggered D flip-flops. So in this way, we can also design the counters using the T flip-flop as well as the D flip-flops. So, so far, we have seen the design and the working of the 2-bit up and the down counters. But by adding more flip-flops to the counter, we can also design the higher bit counters. So in this 2-bit counter, just by adding the one more flip-flop to the right side, we can design the 3-bit counter. So as you can see, here the clock input is applied to the leftmost flip-flop. That means here, the output of that flip-flop will represent the LSB position of the count. So once again, the Q-bar output is connected to the clock input of the next flip-flop. And similarly, the Q-bar output of the second flip-flop is connected to the clock input of the next flip-flop. So here, the flip-flop which receives the clock signal at the last or this rightmost flip-flop will represent the MSB position of the count. So here, this counter will count from 0, 0, 0 to 111. Or we can say that it will count from 0 to 7. Similarly, if we add one more flip-flop to the right, then we will get the 4-bit counter. So this is the circuit diagram of the 4-bit up counter. So here, the flip-flop which receives the clock signal represents the LSB position of the count. And the rightmost flip-flop will represent the MSB position of the count. So since it is the up counter, so it will count from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to 1111. Or in the decimal, it will count from 0 to 15. So, so far, all the binary ripple counters which we have discussed are the full modulus counters. Because their modulus is equal to 2 to the power n. For example, if we see this 3-bit up counter, then its modulus is equal to 8. That is 2 to the power 3 and it counts from 0 to 7. Or if we take this 4-bit counter, then its modulus is equal to 16, that is equal to 2 to the power 4, and it counts from 0 to 15. So in general, for the n-bit counter, the maximum possible value of the modulus is equal to 2 to the power n. So here, all these counters which we have discussed are the full modulus counters. But we can also design the counter which counts up to the specific value. For example, we can design the 3-bit ripple counter which counts from 0 to 4. That means it will not utilize the output states 5, 6 and 7. So we can say that the modulus of that counter is equal to 5 because it counts from 0 to 4. Or commonly, it is represented as the mod 5 counter. So similarly, the BCD ripple counter is the another example. So this BCD counter counts from 0 to 9 and then after it returns back to the 0. So we can say that it is the mod 10 counter because the modulus of that counter is equal to 10. So by using the addition logic circuit with this binary ripple counters, it is possible to design the counter of the specific modulus. Moreover, by cascading such ripple counters together, we can also increase the modulus of the counter. So in the next video, you will see that how to design a ripple counters with the specific modulus. But I hope in this video, you understood how to design the binary up and down ripple counters. So if you have any question or suggestion, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.